that's the theme that welcomes you on the Bridge 99 FM to the public eye. Thank you so much for joining us, Bridge Nation, and Happy New Year to all. Welcome to the Public Eye's first show for 2023. I'm Ronald Thwaites, and my co-host is the Honourable Pernell Charles Sr., and we combine on the Bridge 99 FM. We meet with different views sometimes, with a common spirit for the upliftment of the nation. That's what all of us, whether you're here, there, or anywhere, have to do. And so, this program and this station presages the only viable future, a unified future, a consensual effort for the upliftment of all of our people. Stay with us for the next two hours. We have things to tell you about our nation. We have things to share with you, and we want to listen to you also, your concerns, your viewpoint, wherever you are. Thanks for being a part of the Bridge Nation, a new frontier in radio broadcasting. It's 99.13579 on the FM dial. And of course, remember that in the second hour of this program, we join with our sister station, Ari Jam Radio in New York for the Global Connection Hour. Well, Happy New Year to you, sir, and welcome. Happy New Year, Ari. Um, <coughs> glad to be together again. Yes. Somebody told me that um, we are sounding as if we are brothers. Why not? And I said that it's because we are not looking for <laughs> Yes? Well? That if we were looking vote, uh -huh. we would not be, you know, as compromised. As cordial? Uh, as, yes? Yes. Uh-huh. So, so what? What would what, if 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 that were the case, which it is not? Um, you, you and I, even when we were in Parliament, had um, had had a good relationship. I would pass by your office regularly, not uh, not only f uh, as a courtesy to to the to the role you played as Speaker, but also just because we could always engage in good conversation. Now, if, however, we partisanship divide divides people then um we should do something about that shouldn't we yes but let's go let's look a little further beyond jamaica all right the political system in many parts of the world mm -hmm. reflect exactly what we are saying if you look to the great america yeah. that is supposed to be the leader of our democracy in the western world yeah they're having problem even in selecting a speaker today look at that and the, one of the reasons for that is the division in the party yeah. where they can't bear the compromise. You and I were able to do it because, um, as I say, <laughs> well, we, if we were together, we'd have said to the people, both of us want to represent you, and you have to choose between us. Yeah. Right? And, and, and it must reach a point, just on that score, where if the two of us want to, to represent a particular set of people, whether... Uh, nationally or in a, a constituency, I am prepared to say you go now, and then when you have, have uh, you do your bit, let me do too. Yeah, but the political system that we have <clears throat> grown up in, yeah, but the, that but, we have created, yeah, but with uh, bad brock that, that, that have created us. Hello, you know bad brock. That is bad brock. That is not taking us where we want to go, and therefore, I, I am I am not wedded to any system. And therefore, if, you, if, if the system needs to change, it, 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 there's going to be no edict from God to do so. It's going, or he's going to act only through the agency of people who look at the situ situation honestly and say, look, this can do better. You know, something somebody just yeah. showed me. From showed there, you. There, <laughs> and what they said to what me, they say? Mr. Charles, uh -huh. what Mr. Tweet has just said, mm -hmm. you need to discuss it with him because guess what? Mm -hmm. Remember, is less than forty percent of us voted the last time. Why you think? And the reason that we yeah. are voting that way mm -hmm. is because we are thinking that the new thing that you and I, you yeah. and Mr. Tate are talking about, in, is not is not coming in. Yeah. So if we wake right. up one morning uh -huh. and, and find see, it different, uh, find a difference. Yes then you can expect us to go into the polling booth. Well, no, here, let, let's, let's advance that argument, and I want to put some, some specificity to it. Once when you were speaker, and I can't remember which year it was, and the, they were, the, the cross talk in the house was really acrid, yes? Um, Mrs. Holness, the 
wife of the Prime Minister, but more significantly a member of Parliament in her own right, I heard her say, we disrespect words to this effect. We disrespect each other so much that it's no wonder that people outside do not respect what we do. And, and, I w and, and she was right. She's absolutely right. But she unfortunately, right. unfortunately, not she alone, but she too. The product is from inside. Well. And because the, of exactly what we said. Right. If, if the people outside who voted for me, yeah. hear me talking anything nice about you. Yeah. They say, oh, you're turn PMP. Yeah. And I'm hear you say anything about me that yeah. is nice. They say, oh, you're turn labor right. Uh -huh. Because somewhere along the line, uh -huh. somebody said to them, yeah. for you to... For you to be free, then people have to fight. For, no, for you to be free, we have to separate uh -huh. and see who better than the other. Yeah. So that who is better, you know? Better. Who is the better man? The, no, the, no you've have, you have educated me this New Year program. because that, <laughs> No, no, that is exactly it. Yeah. And, and we put it in our colloquial language, better. No, but then don't, don't, aren't there intelligent people around, yes, who see that that is fruitless? I never always saw it this way. Yeah, but stop right there. This is what is now dangerous. The intelligent people who see that yeah. back off. Of course. They don't come in and try to influence or inject in the rest of us right. the thought that it can be different. Yeah. They just say, why? A and play, I'm voting. A, a plague on both houses. And anybody win-win. Yeah. I just make it my way. Yeah, you understand? Uh -huh. and who, 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 who flop, flop? But it is getting worse and worse. And the uh -huh. voter population is getting smaller and smaller till one day... Somebody's going to say, listen, we didn't vote, you know, we are in charge. Well, and would they be wrong? They didn't vote. <laughs> but, but, but the point I want to make is, is that, that uh, what, what the situation we have now <clears throat> it does not represent democracy. Not it, the democracy that we know no, it, are wanted to be. Precisely. And, I, and I, I harbor the illusion after living seven and a half decades in Jamaica is that we are, God bless people, who are supposed to do better than that. A man just called me in mm. my ear and said, <laughs> Mr. Charles, Mr. Tweed, so that's not democracy. But yes. you and I know uh -huh. that our democracy yeah. say 50% plus one. Okay. So therefore, whether 20% <laughs> vote or 30% uh -huh. vote, the majority is... It, 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 it's king yeah. the kind of vote yeah, well, and that is what we are not we are, no, we are trying to get no. away from and that is that. It, 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 I see it in all different features of our life um, we are both of different religious traditions yes. and there was a time uh, centuries in fact when um, we, we, we allowed differences of religious tradition Yes, despite co certain core beliefs that we shared yes. we allowed religious division to, 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 to shed blood Yes? No, we have learned better. No. Let us do it in other aspects of our life. You have been a trade unionist for your most of your life. All of it. All of your <laughs> life. No, look at that. No, and, and, and the purpose of the trade union, you, 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 you fully, I think, will endorse that the, the antagonistic relationship between labor and capital has, can only take you so far. Can't take you anywhere. Well, look at that now. It cannot take you anywhere yeah. because if you don't have the investor and his capital, yeah. and you, you don't have the labor and, and, and his effort, you don't have, you have, no, you have no enterprise. And I said to the workers, <laughs> listen, respect those who get the money, uh -huh. mortgage their house, uh -huh. get up and come out and put up something to give you a job. Yeah. Now, you must create something in the job that both sides can survive. Right. So, so that the, the the purpose of our interchange here on the bridge in the on the public eye in the public eye, the purpose in, of um, and we're deliberately dropping word. I am, and I'm sure you will join me for the <laughs> upcoming Vale Royal talks yes. between the government and opposition. Yes, which should not be exceptional. They should be normative. Yes, and and we are we are saying to our friends in the diaspora and our people, with, with uns, in uncertain mood at the beginning of 2023 for all the reasons that hold back life and fruitful life in Jamaica. 
This is, the, this, this is the way to go. This is the fruitful path that we must take. We must try to emphasize areas of agreement, forge areas of agreement, and not to insist that division and one-upmanship is our best response, our you best said it, Ronnie, and I say it another way. Yeah. We cannot politicize these meetings and believe we are going to get anywhere. Well, it's a one-upmanship business. Yeah. I, I hear everybody start to say what must be discussed here. Everybody's saying what going to be discussed here. And if this is not being discussed here, I am not going to. Listen. Yeah. Well, you see, so if, I, if I had said uh -huh. to the management of the bridge, uh -huh. why well, am I going to sit down with Kyra and the tonight? I'm going to bring up some PNP business. And, yeah. and Randy said, you know what? I'm bringing the Kyra. I'm going to yeah. some labor right business. Uh -huh. As far as we are concerned, I am a very independent man. Yeah. And I would, I, the thing about you, if you if you say something nice, uh -huh. I'm taking it away, you know. Yes, <laughs> but no, this is this is it. So w w we're setting the stage once again, and we're saying to our people, yeah, stop with the ism and the schism. That doesn't mean you don't disagree. It doesn't mean you have a different, don't have different points of view. It does mean that you listen. It does mean that you yield sometimes. It means sometimes that you sustain your argument. But at the end of the day. At the end of the day, there is something bigger than the positions of either interest, whether that interest is religious or classist or political or any other ism. Well, <coughs> somebody is simply saying, Mr. Charles, if you and Ronnie can unite, mm -hmm. why can't some of us out here follow the footsteps and unite our objective yes. is what is important. And our what are you seeking to True. Okay. To, 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 yeah. to get. Yes. To enforce. Yes. To develop. What uh -huh. are you seeking? So, so, so I'd like to move to some very specific things now in the, b before we welcome Ralston Hammond, the well-known financial analyst and economist, to give us uh, his views on the prospects of the Jamaican economy for 2023. That's our major guess for this segment. But, sir... Um, I'm 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 looking at some some very practical things. Um, embarrassingly, garbage is a problem in Jamaica. Yes. Now, in my view, think back to your early days in Saint Anne. Despite the fact that your parents were of limited means, despite the fact that you were in a rural area and we and you had a whole heap of pygmy who run outside and the the, the barefoot bringing red dirt and whatnot. I can I can bet that your house was always kept clean. I tell you why. Whoever told my father uh -huh. that down the banana walk, yeah, must make the boy them dig out a big hole, uh -huh. right, uh -huh. and put the dirt on the side. Who, who are the boy them? No, me. You and your brother. <laughs> me and my brother. No, no, but that alone. That well, alone. Well, 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 mm -hmm. So whenever there's a Compilation of garbage. Right. Where there's a cutting from the garden, uh -huh. cutting from the lawn, uh -huh. kitchen, soft, mm -hmm. soft, or any time, mm -hmm. you go to the hole with the garbage. Right. Sometime when the father looked down there and said, put some dirt on that now. Yes. So you cover that. Cover that. And then new. New cuttings go on the top. Mm -hmm. And at a certain stage, right. I don't know if it's a year or whatever. That would be condemned. Mm -hmm. And another old thing. You know what is now? Mm -hmm. Fertilizer. Fertilizer. That you've, you've made a compost heap. Yeah, exactly. So, so, so better than any imported um, salt that, 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 that can course. come. I've had the same experience. No, sir. So we have a problem collecting garbage. Um, it, 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 I have a concern about the, 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 the way we organize it. In my view... Keeping my yard clean and keeping my environs clean is a very personal, localized issue. Yes. Okay? So, <clears throat> what, what have we done? Without um, dwelling on the history, we have an agency called National Solid Waste Management. Yes. And they are responsible. Yes? When I hear the mayor of Kingston talk about making a pretty, pretty city or words to that effect, he has absolutely no power over m metropolitan um, parks and, guard, ma and markets. 
He has none. Yeah, that's a that's a separate agency. Yeah, yeah but let me disturb it here. Why? Because I don't see why a councillor uh-huh. should not have a major but, role. No, look at that now. No, no, per, no, no. Perlel and I agree because that is where I'm going. I the councillor, the, the councillor who is a local government uh, representative, exactly. the closest official to the people of the country. Exactly. That person and that and and the grouping that he represents needs to be vested as they were in the past in order to keep the, the environs of that 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 community clean. Let's go a little further. Aye. Let's go a little further. It is the councillor who going to stop by Miss Mary Yard. Of course. And say, Miss Mary, yes. we have a new way of putting out garbage. Now, Absolutely. You, know. you can't throw everything in a one pan. No. Mm. So if you're going to throw cuttings, mm. food mats, mm-hmm. old food, peeling food. You can't put the dead dog or the dead puss egg. Egg. With, with, with the, with, with the, 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 the board that you take off or the rotten board that you take off and, and expect garbage man to pick it up. Right, you can't so do that. You have, my father you have to do it this way. Say, you bury the dead dog and you bury the puss <laughs> <laughs> some yeah. way down the bottom yeah. and make him deep enough that him don't smell. Yeah. But up here, you can't put nail, no. zinc, All right, so. iron, <clears throat> food cutting, mm-hmm. old food, mm-hmm. old clothes in one and expect these decent people yes. who are so, coming on a yeah. truck. So, so will you agree with me then, sir, that what we need in 2023 is to have garbage collection revert to the municipal councils, formerly known as parish councils, and a councillor's success or failure as a, a local government representative, speaking now to a former minister of local government himself, should be based upon whether he or she is efficient in stimulating a clean environment in their division. I am going to disagree with one part. <laughs> what now? I don't want to take away all of it from national work. Suppose we, from NSWMA. Yeah. So I let, want the I want the councillors to me now become a major part. Uh-huh. But, some part. but when I when I was a representative in Central Kingston, yeah. dense population, yeah. plenty garbage. The only thing I, as a as the elected representative, as a person who they looked to for responsibility, along with the council, the only thing I could do was to phone Mr. Audley Gordon or Mrs. Joan Gordon Webley or Miss Jennifer Edwards and beg them to send a truck to Law Street or right. to, which, the, which is foolishness. Which is foolishness. So why would we don't stop that? The role of the solid waste management authority. You never sorry, Ronnie. The man who should be making the call is the councillor, you know. Well, I agree. Because the councillor is on the ground. Yes, yes. More so than the MP. He's relating to me who yeah. is there. Sure. He look out the garbage sure. up past my gate and see what happens. So this an- and then he called Mr. Gordon and said, send an extra shock for you, can we have a look we'll have a little bit here. here. So what I'm saying is the, the role of the central authority is to monitor and set standards and ensure that the local authorities are doing their own their job. Right now, what do the local authorities have responsibility for, apart from cemeteries? And even then, look at the cemeteries. But then if you know, if you just... Sure. If we make a start by saying, bring in the councillors mm-hmm. so that we have two forces. Mm-hmm. So when they want new trucks, Mr. Gardner can find them. Mm-hmm. When they want drivers, and when you want an extra truck because something happened. Yes, sir. So what we have now, we have NSWMA, we have the Ministry of Local Government, and we have the councillors. Yes? And we have the MPs. Yes? yes? And we can't collect the damn garbage. Pedal Charles, we have to do better. But the, but the reason for that <laughs> is we're waiting on Mr. Gordon and... So and everybody are waiting on the next one. Yeah, exactly. So now that makes sense. So, and so, and and so cost- you know yeah. who's going to vote for me <laughs> yeah. as a councillor. Yeah. Don't examine my relationship with you no. as far as getting garbage out of no. the place. So a lady on another radio station right, oh. could say that only twice... Per. Per month. Her garbage pickup. So I multiply that 12 months in a year by two. That's 24 times garbage took up for the whole year. There's something wrong with that. Something's very wrong. Well, she's very fortunate that fair garbage don't get rotten and stink. Well, well, it probably does. But the the key thing, you know, why don't we just do the thing in a way that, the, you know, there's a philosophical principle which has a political application. It's called the principle of subsidiarity. No higher authority must carry out a work that an inf- a lower authority can efficiently manage. And uh, it seems to me that if there's one thing I want to start um, t- 23 with, 
is to say, look, you can build up the whole sense of pride, the whole sense of order. You can affect the behavior, but in, in, in particularly in the press communities, but in any community, if the place is clean. Say this to me. I was Minister of Local Government yeah. in 1980, and I needed like 12 trucks yeah. to go to Coronation Market uh -uh. every Monday to take up the garbage that come from all parishes. Yeah. Garbage mean trash and banana, trash with banana, yeah. thing between pumpkin, yam, <laughs> because guess what? Once you take out the food in the market, uh -huh. the trucks back up at one section of the right. market Empty. and sweep it out. Okay. So I have to find like 20 trucks uh -huh. to go and get. So I said, hold on, craziness. What you bring? I said, listen, man, go over there. Uh -huh. All trucks coming in from St. Anne, uh -huh. Everywhere. Trelawney, yeah. anywhere you're coming from. When you take out the food out the trash, back up the trash in the top of the truck and carry it back a country to go mulch the place. Lovely. Running. Instead of putting in 10 trucks to clean it, mm -hmm. I just needed two. Well, look at that now. Instead what? of needing 20 people to clean it, what I just my, needed four. What my hope. And guess what? All of a sudden, I go down to the coronation market. Everybody, coconut man, slip him thing. Yeah. In fact, when the trucks take out the food, and take off the, the, the passengers. It backs up at one part of the yeah. market and sweep out. Well, now look at that. And gone back a country with just sweep truck yeah. and few people on the back yeah. and leave all the garbage, all the garbage out for you. For you. And, and, and guess what? We don't have the truck to pick no. it up. So, so, no. say they're rotten. so is that still being done? No, no, no. I called the mayor. Yeah. And I'm sorry that I have to say it because I said it to you more than once. Mayor, I yeah. still go to Coronation Market and see empty trucks. Yeah. Gone back a yeah. country. So why aren't we listening to each and other? No, well, what, I no guess, seriously. I guess what that, is wrong I guess, with us? I guess that what we, is we don't want us? certain people to tell us to do certain no, things. No, but then you see, all of this is personal idiosyncrasy. That cannot work. That is what is is bedeviling the U.S. Congress right now, as we are, as the television monitor is telling us. We we Jamaicans can't afford that that decree. Have you ever gone into Coronation Market one Monday after the people have come in Sunday night? No. Well, when they leave, you uh -huh. see, and the trucks them sweep out, mm -hmm. if you don't have trucks and trucks Ready. and trucks yeah. to clear it. Overwhelm you. Yeah. No, if all the trucks yeah. were carrying back their mulch, yeah. because guess what is trash, you know? Yeah. And they can carry back. Of course. Put their pumpkin yeah. and Look at that. Them. Well, I, I have a word with the Minister of Agriculture, because I think he may have a, have a similar interest to yours. You see, <laughs> you see, you see the kind of thing we discuss on the public eye? This is a bridge. We take a break now. When we come back, we welcome Ralston Hammond to give us a purview of the state of the Jamaican economy, the prospects for the economy during 2023. Stay tuned to the public eye. This is the Public Eye on the Bridge, 99 FM. I'm Ronald Thwaites, the Honorable Pernal Charles is our co-host. And we welcome Ralston Hammond, the instigator, producer, and presenter of that great financial affairs program. Ralston, morning and greetings. Yes, good afternoon, Ronald. Good afternoon, sir. Be all the best. Indeed, it's here. afternoon now. Yes. So, Ralston, I'm waiting for you to tell me good afternoon. He's know. telling you good, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Be all because, the best. Because, because guess what? I have gone boasting that I've been learning from you when I used to reject listening. No, no, you can't okay. do that. Real I business. No, uh, uh, new business you, you've been teaching. <laughs> so you need to explain to me how come a minister of finance and a group of civil servants were able to, what power they use to do some, if not all, some settlement in wage, wages and other things, and we don't have a shutdown of the system. Well, I mean, what we are seeing is that the Minister of Finance and the members of the trade union movement, they both agree that there needs to be some reform in the way the public sector is compensated. Yes. But as we speak, there's a whole lot of confusion surrounding that process, and that's one of the things that we'll have to get past this year early in order to 
get the place settled and get back on track because many of the civil servants they are disgruntled as to how the exercise turned out. Many of them they have still not signed on yet because they say that the information flow is inadequate. Many of our public sector workers who got paid in December, particularly those in the medical profession, a lot of them said they got half of their salaries and all of those things. So those are some of the outstanding issues that we need to settle early this year in order to get off to a good start. But at least there's a start, right? Yes. A start. And many of us, when I was there and here, I was nervous to even make a start. Um, there, is, there is an element that Pernell and I have been uh, concerned about, and that is the settlement of any wage uh, arrangement in any sector, and more so in the wide public sector, without an accent on increased productivity. What is your comment on that, Ras? Well, most certainly there has to be an increase in productivity because it's pointless to pay more wages because it's going to cost us more, more than $100 billion without productivity being increased at this particular point in time. So that has to be a significant component. But there are more than one way to get increased productivity. Mm -hmm. Listen to one. If you have a workforce of 500 producing 20% and you reduce the workforce to 300 producing 20%, do an evaluation on that. In other words, over the years, it was that the civil service was just too big for what they were producing. Is there a capacity to produce more? Because you're well, the people that, have... that will come with increased investments in education and training as well as in new technologies. Yes, so you'll have to invest more in education and training as well as in new technologies in order to get more. In the meanwhile, what we're doing is paying more money, which is no doubt needed, but yes. without, without any commensurate increase in productivity. In productivity I, yes. I do not know how you build a, a, a prosperity out of that. Yeah, or or, or a reduction in in, 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 the, in the workforce. Well, yeah, because that which is re- not happening. A reduction in the workforce. Yeah, but that's not happening. Uh, right. gov- no. In fact, the government has promised and, 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 and congratulated itself that it has managed uh, through the COVID, etc. We've managed to not to lay off anybody in, in the, the public, public sector. sector so yeah. you can't have it both ways. But no, certainly. Uh, Rasson, in the, in, in the press this morning, um, someone whose views I... Uh, I think school by you have t- uh, take seriously. Nouriel Rubini speaks speaks about the 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 the, the very like the likelihood of stagflationary debt crisis afflicting many countries of the world. Is Jamaica among that? First of all, what does it mean, and what is our risk going forward in 2023? Well, it means that what we could see is that we we'll still have the inflation at high levels, and it also means that. Because of the increases in international interest rates, it will cost us more to service the debt. So Jamaica is one of the countries that will be impacted by that. And that is why all eyes are on the Federal Reserve. And what we are hearing coming out of the Federal Reserve is that they'll continue to increase the rates, albeit at a slower pace, but for a longer period of time. And that is why every great economist, every international agency is are projecting a recession or stagflation. Stagflation simply means that inflation remains high while growth slows. And that's the scenario for 2023 in the international economy. The UK is already in recession. The European Union is already in in recession. There's a dramatic slowdown in China. And the forecast is that the US will be in recession by the second quarter of this year. And Jamaica? What, What are our prospects? Well, definitely it is going to impact on Jamaica, and that is why the Minister of Finance has made a wise move. He never made a mistake that was made by the Golden Shaw administration and has applied to the IMF for the precautionary liquidity line because he knows that this is something that we may need as we go forward. So are you supporting that? Yes, of course. That's a very good move based on what we're seeing coming well, out of the I'm glad to say that because I, I needed to be educated on that. I was saying that it's... How oh, the man going to take more money put on for <laughs> Well, he hasn't taken it. It's a question no, of... But it. I understand. It's, it's a drawing uh, right it's when, drawing for right, when you uh, need it. But, right. but, but broaden the discussion, Rastan Hammer. What are the prospects? Uh, f- b- b- we're being listened to by people in the diaspora as well as people in Jamaica. <clears throat> the majority of people are 
feeling the pinch of higher prices um, of, of occasioned by all the things that we know. Um, but w what are our prospects for 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 2023? Uh, the the Statistical Institute and to an even greater extent the Planning Institute is is projecting growth of what five percent six percent. But are, is this just catch up from COVID or are we really on the cusp of of, of a new a new beginning? Well, what we saw for the third quarter of last year calendar year was five point nine percent compared to the third quarter of 2021. For the fiscal year, they are projecting growth of 25 to 3%. That's for the fiscal year 2023, 2022, 2023, which ends in March. But for 2023, 2024, we cannot escape what is happening internationally. So, and that is why the Minister of Finance and his wisdom has applied for the precautionary liquidity line from the International Monetary Fund, because based on what is going to happen in our major trading partner, particularly the Republic of the United States of America, it is very prudent in order to be looking forward to that because the U.S. is going to go into recession based on what the Fed is doing, based on what we're seeing in the labor market. And what we're seeing is that, that the remittance flows are already slowing down. The tourism flows, they are booming right now because the place is extremely cold. But as we go into the recession, people are going to take different decisions in terms of whether they vacation or not as they lay off in the technology companies take hold in the American economy because... What the Fed wants to do is to push unemployment to about 5% in order to contain inflation. Inflation is still at 7.1%, which is way above the 2% target range. So the Fed chairman says that they are going to continue to increase the rate, and they are going to do it for a longer period of time, because unemployment is still 3.7%. They want to get it up to the 5% target range. So the U.S. is Jamaica's major trading partner and the coal locomotive of the global economy. So it's difficult to see how Jamaica will escape that protracted slowdown or recession that will take place in the year. Where, how, how will conditions in the United States, uh, uh, how will they affect Jamaica? We import a lot of things from the U.S. We depend upon a lot of persons from the U.S. coming to Jamaica. Um, is, is, is it in those two major, and of course the remittances, is it in those three major areas, those three major that, that, areas. that we are tourism and in terms of our merchandise exports which are which are at already a very low level for the first eight months of last year we imported 5.2 billion us dollars and exported only 1.1 billion so the trade deficit for that period was 4.1 billion and the net flows from remittances were 1.66 billion and from tourism 1.47 billion so we're still a billion dollars short in terms of the flows from tourism and remittances to cover the trade deficit, and that's only for eight months. So, Ralston, there's a little man who just showed me. He mm. wants him to tell him why everything gone up in the supermarket. Things that well, were made here and things that come from abroad. So he wants it in his language. Well... What we're seeing is that the things that come from abroad, because of what we call the supply chain breakdown, it means that the goods are scarce and the cost of shipping them to Jamaica is higher than previously. That helps to drive the, the prices in the supermarkets when we add them to the markup and the lack of competition in the economy. So what we're, that is what we are talking about when we talk about inflation being 10.3% in November. So one of the biggest policy failure for 2022 was the Bank of Jamaica's monetary policies. The governor started to raise the interest rates when inflation was just over 8%. And after 11 rate hikes, inflation is now 10.3%. And the banks have not responded in terms of raising the deposit rates to save us because part of the policy is to increase people to save, encourage people to save more by raising the deposit rates. To the extent that the governor has been complaining, and the banks responded by saying, by the way, you can talk what you want to talk. What we're going to do is to increase all the lending rates effective this month. So all interest rates are going up this month. 
So, and that sure. is going to have a deleterious impact on the economy. Spell it through for me. Spell through. These are the, the, the interest rates hike means that the merchant who borrows money in order to buy goods, uh, increases inven inventory, is going yes. to have to add more to the price because the cost of borrowing his money, his cash exactly. flow, is, yes. is, is going to be higher. It, exactly. mean, it means that the mortgage, that, um, that, that the, because we don't have fixed rate mortgages in Jamaica, do we? You have to pay more. You're going to have to pay more for the house yes. in Bernard Lodge or um, Four Paths or wherever it is you live. Yeah, the car that you buy, you'll have to pay more to keep it. The credit cards that you use, you'll have to pay more to use them. <laughs> All of those things are going to lead to a reduction in consumption and slower economic growth in 2023. Is it true, however, that our economy being so derivative of our major trading partner, the United States, and our consumption patterns being so skewed towards imported goods, um, that, that, that this situation is inevitable and we just have to suck it up? It is inevitable, but we can also do things to mitigate it. For example, the fuel bill for the first nine months of last year was 1.7 billion US dollars. We have to do something in terms of renewable energy in order to reduce that impact on the economy. That is something that is impatient of the base this year. The food bill was also 1.2 billion US dollars for the first eight months of last year. That is something that we have to do something about this year in order to mitigate the impact of the slowdown in flows from tourism and remittances on the economy. Pause on those two for me, please. As far as the, the, the fuel bill is concerned, um, mm -hmm. the, the, I, I, I applauded when we have, we, in previous years, when we saw considerable increase in investment in alternative energy. Precisely. We turned the, the, the solar mm -hmm. energy plant at, um, at, uh, in Westmoreland, etc. Mm -hmm. Why is it that we don't have 10 more of those? I mean, that. We've been patting ourselves on the back that we seem to be nearing a target that we set for renewables in our energy we'll mix. Faster, but we'll have to, we'll have to multiply global. that, won't we? Precisely. We'll have to move rapidly on those things in this year if we're going to deal with a problem. Yes. And this may require particular incentives which we should be prepared to, to, to grant. Precisely. Uh, there are those who say, oh, don't worry, um, Guyana is pumping a whole heap of oil now and they are f we're, we're friendly with them, don't. And so we're going to be able to get a bly with, with that or maybe we'll make up with Venezuela. Well, any prospects uh, in either of those? Well, we have no relationship in that regard with Guyana and we are seeing the situation with Venezuela. They are about to restart Petro Carib on different terms because the U.S. is now more cozy with Venezuela based on a shortage of energy coming from the Russian Ukrainian crisis. But, but we are not. Yes, Jamaica has got to do it. Whatever America does, Jamaica is doing it. Well, what a, no, but, we have not yeah. go to Venezuela. <laughs> we no. have not go to Venezuela. No, we, we are still no. backing Mr. Guido. Yes, and although yes, the yes. United States is about to to to, to ditch him, and right. so uh, unless we do our, our usual PP clock clock, um, that the, we are we are the outliers yeah, in, yeah, in this regard. Yeah, they're back yeah. in who you say? Guido, this one Guido is supposed yeah, to be. Yeah, but him gone. I'm gone. <laughs> but, but, but Jamaica, but Jamaica still holding up him doppy. No man, no, no, man, no, 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 no it's no, true. No, no, we don't tell you yet. Oh. No, but it, and it's, so energy is. I, I mean, the, it is what uh, uh, unless it's crucial, Ronnie. Uh, it's crucial, and what we're doing now is stupidness because we're not <coughs> we're not investing enough, and we are we are we are we are, we are cutting our nose to spite our face, huh? Precisely. No, but and then now the food thing. Um, th this is this is one that uh, you and I have discussed during previous uh, times together, and which I know Pernell is 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 very concerned with. Um, is is there a is there a real prospect of reducing that that food bill, or is that one of the sort of essential elements of imported items that we have to to, to deal with, Ralston Hammond? No, we have to do something about it, and we had a long conversation with the Minister of Agriculture this morning, and he says that he's focused on that the Eat Smart Grow Start program, and that that will get a, a lot more steam during this year, and we'll see a whole lot of results by the end of the year. Uh, well, but, but I wish him very well. I know his, uh, yeah. my, my counterpart here does too, but I don't yeah. see it on the ground. 
I see the sugar la the cane lands parallel, and I have been noticing in previous yes. uh, conversations yes. that mm -hmm. the cane lands remain remain um, in ruin. It um, yeah, because those things will be accelerated this year, and that in terms of predial larceny, which is a big constraint, we'll see legislation to deal with that by the middle of this year. That is one of the big things running. Yeah, said so they have given because the that lands investment into the sector. Right, they have given some lands to the farmers. Yes. And they have planted the first two crops. Yes. And they have only been able to reap half because yeah. the two foot push. Yes. Yes. No, I accept that. That, that, that. that man break into a, 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 sure, a sure. cow and a goat in and take half and gone. Indeed. The, 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 clearly, there is need for, for, t for tight and security in this regard. Um, the, so, are there targets being set and, and the measurable uh, increases in, in productivity, in, in production and productivity, Raston Hammond? What do you see on the horizon? Well, talk, we. Talk is not yeah, enough. We, no. We see a lot of that taking place, but we'll have to do a lot more. We saw the 17% jump in agriculture out the third consecutive quarter during the third quarter. It was the major driver within the rail sector, apart from manufacturing. Sure. Yeah. Sadly, so, coming from a very low base. Low base, yes. Mm -hmm. yes, 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 yes. But nonetheless, it, it, it's pointing in the, in the right, right direction. direction. Sure. Yeah, man. And yeah, we, give yeah. credit, we, we give credit for that. So, Precisely. So the people listening to us now who are um, existing on a minimum wage of 9,000 plus, uh, those who are unemployed or those who are on, um, like two persons who will remain nameless, who are living on pensions, uh, <laughs> um, 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 what, what is the prospect for us, Mr. Herman? Well, their life is not going to improve unless we move rapidly on those things, rapidly on the energy front, rapidly on the food front, rapidly on the training front, because although we tell the people that the unemployment rate is 6%, the labor participation rate is extremely low. There are some 800,000 persons outside of the, of the labor force. 800,000? 800,000 persons outside of the labor force as we speak. Uh -huh. And we need to find a way to get those persons in the labor force, to train them and to get them in the labor force, the hard trust is underperforming. We need to step up the performance of the hard trust to get those people into the labor force. We have to find a way to create a new psychology among a lot of these people. Because yes. if you want somebody to work now, you can't find nobody. Precisely. Everybody, want, want, everybody wants $5,000 a day uh, to work. The, so yes. when, when you hear that we have a workforce and we, 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 we cannot find anybody to work, you know, we cannot find anybody to work. We cannot find anybody to work for what they can get. Precisely, so, so that's the point. But so right, we, need to, we need to train them so that they can be more productive and we need to get the inflation rate down. And so that they, yeah. No, but Parnell is saying something else. Parnell is pointing to a, a, a psychosocial situation which doesn't help us either to get uh, a training effectively going or uh, b b by extension to get the inflation down. And that's, a, that, 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 that's outside of but deeply embedded in the realm of economics, Mr. Hammond. Yes, of course, certainly. And we, because what is the people are saying around it? No, inflation running at 10.3% based on the official numbers. When they go into the supermarket, it is higher. And they are saying that I can't work for $9,000 per week because I won't be able to survive on that. So everybody gone, those 800,000 persons, a lot of them into all kinds of hustling, the, the scamming, the chopping, all of those things. And those things help to drive the rate of criminality. So if we take the approach that we are going to bring in foreigners to substitute for them without training them, then we'll be able to deal with the crime problem. So we'll have to find a way to get those people into the labor force. We'll have a more productive economy if we get them into the labor force. You can't have such a low labor participation rate and then talk about 6% unemployment. Well, son, there are two items somebody just called me to ask you to tell us. Um, relatively, although high, the exchange rate does not seem to be going at any major speed. And fuel, for the first time I hear that over two or three weeks, fuel dropped five, five dollars. So uh, those two items, um, tell me a little about them. How, how can we keep them coming down? Well... All right, so one thing is that, let's start with the exchange rate. In order to keep the exchange rate coming down on a stable on a permanent basis, it means that we'll have to increase our export earnings significantly. What the governor of the Bank of Jamaica was successful in is using the reserves to intervene. He intervened some 26 times last year, as well as to raise the benchmark rate 
to up to 7% in order to maintain stability in the exchange rate. So stop, now, stop there for me, sir. want to understand. The, the exchange rate has moved from hovering close to 158 to 1 to now being 152, 153. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and you are saying that that has happened not because of some increase in exports and export earnings, but no. but because the Bank of Jamaica has been using the net international reserves. No doubt, no, no one is suggesting improperly, but it has been used to 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 cushion uh, pressures and also the 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 increase in the base rate has mean that there has been less demand for foreign exchange. Precisely, and the increases in the base rate tie to production, so that's yeah. not good. And the infrequent intervention in the reserves run down the reserves, so I know at three billion and change, and that is why the minister had to take precautionary action by applying Have another for supply. Precisely. Okay. No. <coughs> no, that's not a sustainable situation. The only sustainable situation is to produce and export more, and we want to see a renewed focus on production and export. During this year, but Ranstan, I am, I am, I am, I'm, I'm hearing, and I am as Rani and myself have been forcing it. There's more than agriculture that needs to be improved. Of course, let's. Go, let, well, I'm not hearing the real private sector talking about export the way that they used to. What oh. is happening? I mean, everybody's oh. satisfied with making. That's a fundamental point you're making. The private sector, which was created under the slogan, free enterprise and watch the maker go, is letting down the country. They are more interested in pushing paper. And that's one of the things that the administration will have to get on top of during this year. The banking sector, the financial sector, cannot continue to operate the way they are operating. When you see the governor of the Bank of Jamaica has to be complaining about the behavior of the banking sector and then telling the people that you can't do anything about it. The Minister of Finance told me that he does not have a solution to that problem at this particular point in time. The opposition spokesman on finance also told me that he does not have a solution to that problem at this particular point in time. So we are being held ransom then? By the financial sector. What a way you complete my sentence. And, yeah. um, and, 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 and none of those who hold the levers of power uh, are prepared to or can think of any way to, do, to deal with it. Our, so our, so, our, so, our, so what, is the basis, what is the basis of, of our hope for the future then? Our, Come on now, this is a new year. If that problem is not resolved, then the hope for the future is fading. That's the point I'm making to you. And both persons who have responsibility for that portfolio. So they do not have an answer to the problem now. Well, Mr. Leachin tells us that we should th we should look to Mr. Musk and see yeah. how, how he is functioning and, okay. and take example from that. I don't know what that means. You so saw that. Ask, ask the people in the U.S. about Mr. Musk's behavior and see if that is a behavior that we should take as an example. They say he has, lo he has lost more money well, than any other person. So, no, no, but, but you know, it, we, we, can, we can quip and be a little sardonic, acknowledge about these things. But we, we're, what we're, no, no, what we're talking about is, 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 is people finding, finding food to give their picnic, to send yeah. them to school, to make yeah. sure that we, we're getting value for the bucks we're spending yeah. in education. It means yeah. we're, we're, we're skirting around the notion of the profound um, mental adjustment that has to be led and, and internal in order that we take work and productivity not, not, more seriously. Our, our, our outputs increase and, and we, we, we get, get value for the inputs that we are making. Um, exactly. Where is the leadership coming from there now? Well, that's the point I'm making to you, that nobody seems to be able to bail this cat, which is holding the country ransom. The financial sector sits on over a trillion dollars of the country's savings. The maximum they are paying is 1.46%. That's the maximum deposit rate at this particular point in time. And this is not, these are numbers given to us by the governor of the Bank of Jamaica himself. And he's paying them 7% per annum. And they have responded to his complaint by saying, by the way, you can go and check. We are increase every interest rate and fees by the end of January. Now, and the Minister of Finance says he can't deal with that problem. And the opposition spokesman on finance says he can't deal that problem either. So what? So who is running the country? Well, so, so what is the answer? What kind of intervention are we talking about? Would that be uh, require a different um, a different level of 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 
unity among the the the, the legislative uh, of course there has to be a legislative solution to this problem the myth the governor himself and we remember i'm frequently telling you about this oligopoly the governor himself mentioned the oligopolistic relationship between the two big banks and that they hold everybody ransom including him to attend to, to be able to send money to some oh. shareholders, granted, oh. that's very important, oh. to be able to, to, repa okay. to repatriate money to Canada. Okay, you get the problem. <clears throat> but there has to be a so, certain unity among both sides and the public of Jamaica as to how we deal with this problem legislatively. Well, well, so <laughs> well this, is a, this is illuminating, you know, Bernal. Yeah, but listen, I, I am worried, and I'm making it public, I'm worried, because... You hear about this very royal thing? Yeah. Uh -huh. I think we could do some starting there. Yeah, but that has to be on the agenda. Yeah. But I agree it, it, it won't be. Yeah, but I know, I know it won't be, but that should be. But we are hearing threats. I put as far as that of politicizing the situation. That we're going there to look vote. But, but, but now if we don't drop that and these who, and put who, these who people, is threatening? Running and I'm not, not the leaders now, you know. Uh-huh. But the supporters, uh -huh. everybody wants for them to look at things for God. We need leadership. We want the leaders to decide. So listen, we are going there to give joint leadership to the development of Jamaica. Right. And here's the problem. The state of emergency, in and of themselves, can't deal with the problem of criminality in the country. We have to have fundamental social and economic transformation. And that is why something like this must be on the agenda if we're going to be successful. But, Ronnie, you've been saying this to me for the past several weeks. Yeah. And I've been sympathizing with him saying it to me because I've been sympathizing saying it to him. Say, so listen, Ronnie, these guys who are now 18 years old, how are you, what changes are you going to give to them? to tell them in the next five years that they can make a benefit from. What, what, what change? So everybody who is saying this and this and that, Listen, no, tell me no, no, this is it. a profound thing because uh, uh, Ransom just put his, his finger on it. But at the same time, our consumption habits and our, our aspirations do not help towards the ends of uh, more inclusion, uh, greater egalitarianism, more, more output. A uh, higher GDP than 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 we have. Um, every 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 uptown Christmas party and dance from with 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 entrance prices from ten thousand to fifty thousand a night was heavily subscribed. You know, Mr. Hammond. Not only that, Ronnie. Everybody have a car. Well, there you, you are. tell me how can so many people have so many cars yeah. in so little roads? Well, so more that you can't go. Yeah, home? You can't, well, go to, can. you can't get to go to work. Well, listen to what Ralston will say as, cl as you How close. How can you have the sector which controls the country's savings, right? Not deploying the country's savings for productive purposes, but making so much money by just using oligopolistic relationships. Oh, so, and then... So let me ask you the final question then. When um, I'm coming, when um, when you spoke to the Minister of Agriculture, you, did you ask him about the sources of credit for, for, for food production? And very little. Very little. Ras and Hellman, <laughs> that's it. That that caps it all. We we thank you so much. You you're the barometer where we where, where we are, where we need to go. Much obliged and encouraging you to continue with real business. Always a pleasure. Thank okay. you. And thank you. We, we, we take thank a break on you. the Bridge 99 of the public eye. When we come back, the global hour. Coming up to 10 minutes after 1 o'clock on Wednesday afternoon, the 4th of January 2023. This is the Bridge 99 FM and... This is the public eye. Joining for the global hour with Erwin Clare of Irish Jam Radio in New York. Erwin, are you there? Happy New Year. Yes, I am. And happy New Year to both you gentlemen, to the listeners in <coughs> Jamaica and all over the world, for that matter. Were you listening to us earlier? I, I, I caught a piece of it um, when I think Mr. Ross and Hyman was on and earlier your earlier discussion on 
uh, re retrieving your garbage, removing garbage. You caught you caught the gist of it. Yes, Erwin Erwin Clare, Hakeem Jeffrey for speaker. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, listen. Who? If the guys, Hakeem if the guys, Jeffrey, who, the, the Democrat. Look at look at well, the result. Well, We're monitoring the CNN. <laughs> Jeffrey's the Democrat. Is is ahead of McCarthy. Well, uh, well, oh, well, hold on. Well. He can't he, he, he can't keep that lead. But hold on, let me ask you a question. <laughs> yeah. It is not a party thing. In it's a party thing. Yes, but it is a party. Very party. You go ahead, Erwin. But, but but within the party structure. Yeah. There is there is fracture. They have a gang of and five. You remember that, Mr. Uh, uh, and, and and even in that <laughs> gang of five and others, there are persons there who are also carving out and want their pound of flesh. And 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 because in this whole deliberation is not about country right now, it's about their issues and who has the gavel and who is in charge of this and all all of unsundry. And it, it is creating a, a kind of paralysis in the whole government structure in the United States because, as you know, the House of Representatives, the person who heads that, the Speaker of the House, is second in line to the presidency. And with that, too, the, 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 the House of Representatives also are responsible for the governance as it relates to funding, as it relates to committees. And so all those things are in, abeyance, in, 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 in an imbalanced situation right now. I know you're not looking at it, but we're to tell you that now McCarthy appears to be suffering defeat on the fourth ballot. Yeah, it's, and it's quite possible. And, and we understand now that he has asked President Trump to put his thumb on the scale. So we'll wait to see <laughs> what, that hap what happens there because that in itself has its own manifestations and, and what it means going forward. But it also demonstrates, gentlemen, is that this is the same type of majority or slim majority that Speaker Pelosi had. And look what she has accomplished. And what are these folks saying to the nation? That they are probably not capable of managing the house. And so 2024 looms large as to what transpires as we speak. Well, um, I, I, what is the difference for the Caribbean people, for the for the working class in America, for the immigrants' uh, cause in, in in this in this kind of struggle, Erwin Clare? Is it is it does it make a difference who gets what? Not really, but it has you know foreign implications. I mean, you are the, the, the as you know, the United States is committed at this point to to, to Ukraine, and monies have been budgeted, which will stay until September. There's nothing that this new Congress can do to change that. But as it relates to other aspects of our existence that would impact us as a people, the, the politics of the true politics of existence for the average man in the street exists at the local level. You know, what takes place in City Hall, what takes place in the Assembly. This on a national scale, however, has implications as relates to the committees that will be formed, how, uh, how, what, what bills will be put in place, whether they want to roll back certain situations. That's at the national level. But as it is right now, the average man is going to work today and he still has to work enough money to pay his rent and, and ensure that he puts food on his table. And those things are, are gener generally managed at the local level. The, the it, well, it, it appears that, 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 that the fourth vote has been inconclusive for Mr. McCarthy um, mm -hmm. again, um, as mm -hmm. we're monitoring the CNN tracker. Yeah. But <coughs> yes. the, 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 it, what does this say about the buoyancy of the American economy? Earlier on, Ralston mm. Hammond was suggesting that the U.S. economy will probably go into recession by the second quarter, which has a knock-on effect on what Jamaica's prospects are likely sure. to be. Sure. Um, sure. It, it, is there any respite? Is there any prospect uh, for, for anything different? That is true, and you know, one of the things we, you know, we, we have heard the prognosticators indicated the, the doom and the gloom, which never really materialized. Uh, we, we, we seem to have been in this kind of neutral position waiting for maybe that big thing to happen. Instead, we have had massive snowstorms and stuff like that. We have come close to having our electrical grid almost crumble. But the point here is, this, is that um, the possibility exists, yes, that that could be a reality, Ronnie. But at the same token, too, there are also bright signs on the horizons, too, that, that the United States will get over this. And, and, and some will also say to you that the recession may have its, its advantages as to how we move forward. 
One of the one of the things, Pernell uh, Irwin, that we're noticing now is the, is the unusually high demand for Jamaica and Caribbean labor in the United mm. States. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm, I've been mm -hmm. approached since we last met on this program by by reputable sources who say, "Look, send us every truck driver you have, send us any teacher that you have, send us any person who is prepared to work caring the elderly or the disabled." And uh, mm -hmm. the the labor market is is crying out for this in all of all over the great United States. How, why, and, and how, how, how should this be facil facilitated? What impact does this have on the southern border? Well, well I'll tell you something. If you had asked Ryan uh, Ralston. Ralston this question, uh -huh. it was very interesting to hear because this is where the Jamaican economy, the, Brit the, the United States economy, and the participants who really work it because you can have economy, economy, but the, the working. Sure. The, the, that the, makes so the, such the, a difference. The, the, yes. You know. mm -hmm. Because you must remember, you know, gentlemen, that the, the buoyancy of the United States economy, um, as it relates to certain skill sets and certain work that requires the lower skill sets to accomplish, but are very critical. Because when you go into the five star restaurants in Manhattan and Washington, the folks who cook the food and clean the dishes and all that are very integral to your being a very having a very good time there. Many times these are folks who uh, we we allow through the border without any uh, fanfare to accomplish that. The very people who you see complaining today are the same people to expect to go into a restaurant and have the vegetables and have their dishes washed and all that. These are some of the folks providing those services with the attention negatively on the border. It has almost dried up that stream of employment. And so now, I think we are heading into a situation where, believe it or not, hypocritically speaking, <laughs> there are people who are happy that these people are at the border because they need, they need them to work. Well, this is and a that's point. a fact. Yes, I, I've been concerned about that because it seems to me that the, the, the Republicans who are traditionally conservative on immigration, many of, the, 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 the made, many of them in major corporations are now citing a shortage of labor as being mm -hmm. a break on their, on their profits. Exactly. exactly. So, so that's where, because America moves when the economy needs, needs, needs assistance. <laughs> they move in unison. So although we have, on one hand, the, the, the cry of immigrants at the border, hey, but those are the folks we need in our, in our, in our gardens to clean our, home, to clean our homes, etc. Et and it's by no means, ladies and gentlemen, are we putting down those functionalities. But what you find is that many people do not want those jobs who are in the, in the, in, in the normalcy of the operations. That's how it goes. That's just life. But the point here is this, is that, Yes, there are, there are avenues in the whole economy that will require for these lower skill employees. And there are challenges there now for such. So what, what, what should be the response of, of, of those engaged in training, uh, in, uh, those engaged in, in uh, encouraging Jamaicans to fit themselves for foreign em employment? Uh, well, well there, <clears throat> there are two areas running that I've always looked at. Nurses and teachers, we know that they're going to leave train a whole lot some will stay to satisfy the local market and those will go that's what it comes down to well but uh, there are two, two, one minute there are two there are more two things in that you know to train require people who resources. can do the training uh, yes. resources, require yeah. res well resources you have to m bring it down it require money mm. teachers mm. and the quality of people available to be trained Okay. Now, so that is why, it, it, you know, people are picking the best. And we are losing the best because the, to fill this gap, they are taking the best that is available working with us. So, and what yeah, are we so there has to be a response. And, and, and my, my criticism of, 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 of the state, of government, is that the, the, it, it just has gone and it, it, there is no effective response. Our engagement, our, engage, our, 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 our engagement out of the box. No, no engagement the, at the, all. No, who, is, who is saying to the teachers, look here now, don't go because we are hoping to give you a better deal? Or can we, can we discuss what, how a retention policy might work? Um, what about bonding? What about uh, increased uh, remuneration? How do we satisfy the, the, the difficult task, Pernell Charles Irwin Clare, of, of, of in, 
engendering excellence in our education and training system, fully understanding that we are we are we are likely to lose large numbers. So Why is it that we are training only five hundred nurses a year um, when when we ought to be training five thousand? Somebody just tell me to tell you. Yeah. This has been from a long, long time so, ago. Which gives me and, no, which and which makes we, me more there aggravated. Was a, well, there, yeah, was yeah, a, there was a time we were training 100. Now we're training yeah. 500. Yes, sir. And we're, st yeah. and we're losing the four more. out of the 500. So, 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 so Uno do something about it now? But, but it takes resources, Ronnie. But so it takes teachers. Hello, sir. It takes uh, place. Resources. It takes money. Yes, sir. We, and we're not short on any of those. I'm, yes, I am insistent. We are not short on any of those. If we said to the United States, as President Obama p proposed uh, in 2015, look here now, we, uh, you, we need your nurses. All right? So come now. Whether it is church, school, hospital, etc., send us the nursing tutors. Yes? W work up, b b knock on Mr. Perry's door, your friend, our friend Erwin uh, Clare, yes? And say, come now, we need 25 nursing tutors in order to be yeah. able to double and our that's, enrollment. And, 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 and that's why I say USAID, the engagement Rupin. and the outside, the outside the box engagement that we need Look in this man. whole situation. We, 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 it, we, it, we, we have a problem for every forward. solution. We defeat ourselves before we, 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 we get on the field. We can't do that. The, you tell the, me, we can't, we, we, if, if, we are, if we are going to be exporting X, X hundred teachers a year, so, 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 w w I don't know all the, all the, all the, all the places, but whether it is Khan Academy or this institute or that, come now, we need to be training, b b um, have a, a, a target of training 200 physics teachers a year, yeah. and 25 will stay, and 175 will go. No man. I think, I think there's economic opportunities there, but gentlemen, we're coming up on a break, and I just need to throw something <laughs> out here. Throw I don't out. know if you, the, the whole situation about the NFL player who collapsed on the field recently. Yes. And, and, and I reason I bring up the story, and we hope that yes. he will be better. Yes. I want to bring to our happened. attention here, yes, that the equipment yes. that saved his life was an equipment called a defibrillator machine. Yeah. A defibrillator. Because Which the whole idea here, he could not be moved from where he was until his heart, they got his heart back working. Because yeah. to, to, to rush somebody when they collapse the hospital is to kill them yeah. instantaneously. Yeah. And the reason I say this is that I want to bring to your attention that the, an organization I'm involved with, Team Jamaica, because started a program here in Jamaica to equip as many schools as possible with a defibrillator machine. We Remember when hiatus. that that serious that Georgian yeah, yes, yes, died yes. Uh, b yes, because sir. of the absence Dom of that. Dominic Dominic James. Look at and that. A and your, a and your, your response was in was was before, but also intensified yes. as a result indeed, of that. Indeed. We have been on a hiatus since COVID. We are starting again this year. And this year, Ronnie and Perna, we're looking at encouraging partnership out of Jamaica. And I, why I say that, entities like the Fire Brigade or the Heart Association, whatever it's called, and preferably organization like that. So we can partner and do something more expansive. And I want to say again, that equipment is important. We need to begin to sensitize more of Jamaicans as to how it's used and its importance. How, how much and, does and a defibrillator cost, Erwin Clare? Under $2,000, you can have such an equipment. And don't tell me that it is not possible for every high school, indeed more than high school in Jamaica, to have that kind of, 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 of equipment. Yes? Indeed. They can, they can, they can if, it is, if it is Pernell, alumni, fish fry, um, yep. and, and, yep. and tell us nonsense about parents don't have to contribute anything, go to them and say this, this may be the... the the, the, the difference between life and death for your child. Indeed. Put our money in here. If they ask the, no, 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 yes. It goes down to leadership. But where the leadership there? The, the car really? running. I that's told what, you this that's what you and I talking. swore 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 an oath to lead. We were talking right. about we were talking about not the the, the principal, the headmaster. Yeah, yes, the but man, gentlemen, but gentlemen, and it's not just a man, you know, woman too. I know, woman too. I Take know, the but, break. But listen, listen to this. <laughs> Before you go to break, listen now. We're not waiting on authorities to move on this. Civil society has a responsibility, and we're stepping up to the plate. So we're gonna take a global break now. We'll be right back. Thank you so much. This is the Bridge Ninety Nine FM. This is the Public Eye. We welcome you back to the Public Eye in this version of the Global Connect Ira Jam, the Bridge. 99 FM in Jamaica, Irish Jam, New York in Irish Jam, 93.5 in New York. My name is Erwin Clear again. 2023, as we start this new year, 
We're going to join our friends now in Jamaica, Ron Tweets and Pernod Charles. And what a pleasure to be able to welcome the chair of the Union of Jamaica Alumni Associations of, in the United States, the Primary Schools Learned Tablet Committee. Uh, we're happy to, to, to have Mrs. Evelyn Garden and uh, the principal of the Beulah All Age School, well known in Clarendon, Mrs. Nadine Gale Little. Ladies, welcome. Happy New Year to you both. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, so, you so much. Good. Evelyn Gordon, um, tell those who are not as familiar as I am uh, th wh what UJA is and how you become involved in the Learned Tablet program, please. All right, so good afternoon again, everyone. Happy New Year to you all. And, and welcome thank you home. for having me. Um, my name is Evelyn Gordon, and I'm the president for the New Day School Alumni Association, a UJA director, and the chair for the Learning Tablet, along with my chair, other chair, Leslie and Samuel. Let me just share a little bit about UJA and who we are. UJA, the Union of Alumni Association, UJA, USA, Inc., is a nonprofit umbrella organization of Jamaican educational institution the member associations are comprised of primary, secondary, and tertiary institutions from Jamaica, Yes. based in New York. It was created to unify the, the activities of all associations dedicated to the improvement of educational opportunities for all students in Jamaica and those who have immigrated to the USA. In terms of the learning tablet, we started, we met with Joel Webb, who is the CEO for Learn It in 2021. And based on that uh, information that we received from Joel Webb, we felt that the primary school needed this tablet. It was a must for us. So in our collaboration for the last year and a half with Mr. Joel Webb, the Learn It tablet has been launch into the primary school, several primary schools or nine primary schools in Jamaica right now who are member association of UJAS. And so what we this what we learned from that deployment based on those nine primary schools is how important this tablet is. And so we decided along the board and everyone else that we need to get this tablet in all the primary schools in Jamaica across the island. And our goal is to make sure our primary school students are reading at a high level. One of the things we have found out that after most students, not all, some, when they get on to high school, still struggle to read. And so the huge mission is to ensure that all students from the primary school, when they get on to high school, they are reading at a high level. So that is the goal and how we started the huge project after being exposed to this tablet and as Mrs. Little will share her experience with the tablet and how her students have sort of taken on to it. Thank you very much for that. That makes it clear. Plenty of questions, but Mrs. Little, please tell us, have you had the introduction of this tablet at Beulah and what has been the, what does it look like and how do the students use it and to what effect? Uh, good afternoon again, gentlemen. Um, we implemented the rolling out of the learning tablets last um, term. And we would have started September through to December with the tablets. Can I tell you that our students are absolutely in love with this device? We're talking technology here. We're talking about a tablet that is preloaded with over 170 learning applications for the students. We're talking about these learning applications being game-based, being highly interactive and engaging. We're talking about the students being able to work at their own pace, to interact with the content, and to develop their skills as they go along under the supervision of the, their teacher. And so they have been using the tablets. They have been having fun using the tablets. No longer do we have these students whose attention span tend to be fairly short sometimes, really on task because it's fun 
and they are working with this device that is fascinating and there's so many things that they can do with the device and the children are absolutely in love with working with their learning tablets what grades do you and, and introduce the it on the cake we would have in, introduced it to all the grade levels and I, and I but i want to make the point of saying that we have focused on the students who are most disadvantaged due to their situation their learning levels and so we're working at those who for reading for example we would say they are at the pre perma level or they are at the basic level they're at the foundational level so because we only have six learning tablets we have to really narrow down our focus because it really cannot span um, the student population and all the grades so from the grades we select the students who are most disadvantaged with literacy and numeracy and we have been targeting these students in a set program outside of their regular teaching and learning um, program with their classroom teacher to help to enhance um their numeracy and literacy skills and we have seen marked improvement over the short space of time that we have implemented the use of the tablets well that's uh, I just add some i'm sorry yes please, yeah, good. please go ahead yes um one of the things and thank you so much um miss little for that one of the things we wanted to add one of the plus here is that this does not require the internet you don't need the internet to yes. use this tablet very important and in some of our countries some of our rural schools that we have internet issue may be an issue this is the perfect device for them to have because it does not require the internet access for it to be operational so and it you know Ronnie, sorry go ahead you Ronnie. know Ronnie, one, one of the things that coming out of this that to jamaica and when we speak of diaspora engagement and the skill sets that are available in the diaspora and how we 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 want to help situations here is that the folks there have thought have gone outside the box and are constantly looking at opportunities to create an environment here that resulted in this machine because it's not just sending a tablet and that's it they have gone above and beyond and in so doing let's not forget something that is very important here financing the project as well ronnie and, and pernell well i want that's to ask so what is the cost of of, of of one of these learning tablets mrs gordon the tablets cost $130. We do have a, a project with uh, Mr. Uh, Joel Webb, so we pay $130. I gather Mr. Tablet. Webb is the, is the, is the, is the programmer. Yes. yes. He's, the, he's the developer for developer. the, for okay. the And can I get it clear? The, the, the assistance, Mrs. Little, is not just for literacy, but for numeracy as well? Yes, and, and also to say that while those are major areas that they, the apps can um, assist with, there are also other areas, science, for example, and other skill sets that can be developed using the tablet. So, so it's not just limited to numeracy, <laughs> literacy, and mathematics. Very and good. if I may just quickly add, if I may just quickly add, the Ministry of Education, the National Standards Curriculum, it is in line, it is aligned to the, the, the curriculum. And so whatever is being done supports what the needs of the curriculum would be. So if, mm. if, if it is $150 or less, 130, for, per, 130 per, per tablet, I'm, I'm obliged to ask, um, what support does Uja need uh, to, to scale this up? because we're having a serious problem. I've told Erwin and Pernell, ladies, of a situation of a high school that I'm familiar with, which took in 180 grade seven students in September gone, and only 40 of them can read. Well, mm -hmm. you mentioned that we're all looking for like-minded organization to help us to push this out. One of the things I must say is that we also have the Alumni Association that is key. They work closely with their primary schools yes. and they donate yes. tablets. So this is a great partnership across the board. No, but we've just spent no, no, we've no. just spent eight, several billion dollars, <laughs> Irwin Clare, to buy textbooks. Yeah, uh, yeah. F which which, no. which very often it, uh, the kids can't it's read. Oblique, yeah. But but you know, Ron, it, I, I think the, the proverbial question you're asking is that here is a a project. And, and based on, you, you heard Principal Gail Little, Little mention, yes, mention about, and, and, I, and I, I'm hearing the enthusiasm. Yes. So, so, so it's not just about a, a, a product that is enhancing the life 
of the child, but also provides a new avenue for the teacher to become even more creative in getting across the lesson plan. This is a win-win situation. So I can only hope Pernell Charles and Ronnie Twits, who have a hundred years in politics and connected to government and all that, that they are hearing this. <laughs> and these are the type of cultivated opportunities that must now be given the type of support necessary. Because what we have done here is that community-based organizations have gone out, invested, and have provided the tool. Now we need to take to the next level. Uh, Mrs. Mrs. Gordon, how can we get these these tablets? People listening to us would like to to um to 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 access one. Schools maybe. How how does it happen? This is twenty thousand Jamaican dollars, Pernell. Yeah, twenty thousand Jamaican dollars. Hello, I know hundreds of people <laughs> who have spent more than that to go to one party this Christmas. All right, it was thirty thousand. It was thirty thousand, Ronnie. Thirty thousand. <laughs> Thirty thousand what to go to the party? To go to the party? No, yes. no, one was forty-five. <laughs> yes. right, there you go. So it's yes. two tablets there. We, look here, <laughs> m m Mrs. Gordon, help me. How can we All back right, up? Thank you back so you much up. for promoting us. We appreciate this. The, we have the UJA www.ujausa.org. Uh -huh. We have TD, so we can have start off with that. We have our website that is fully updated with all of the things that we have and we will continue to update as we move forward with this deployment over the next couple of days as we arrive in jamaica so th that information is there we can also have td learn it at gmail tld learn it at gmail.com is another option to reach out to us and we can certainly start the conversation from there Mm. You see, you see, you see, here's my pet peeve, you know, and I've said this on this platform before, gentlemen, and you know that, is that the diaspora has always been reached out to, to respond. And as we seek to enhance and build out relationships, the time is now come when we have the expertise, we have the knowledge, the skill sets, that we also want to be part of the the, the process in the decision making. We don't not asking to vote in Jamaica. We're talking about if you have these type of persons with skill sets, they should be part of the ministry's profile here as to how they look at things going forward. Maybe we have some ideas that could move some things here in Jamaica at a quicker rate. Let's explore that. So, what, what, uh, are you are you are you knocking on on closed doors in Jamaica, Mrs. Garden, uh, or? or <laughs> I well, mean, let me just say, we're knocking on every door. We want someone to open all the doors for us. Yeah. So we are knocking on every door globally. So we need this, as we mentioned earlier, we would like to have a tablet in every primary school Perfect. student, 60, 650 plus across the island. That is you just goal. And under our leadership, we intend to do that and accomplish that. And with great teachers like Miss Nadine Little here, spearheading the project, within Beulah, I think we are on a great start. We have several other primary schools that will be receiving these tablets over the next four days, next couple of days, and we look forward to launching this across the country, the island, actually. Okay. Um, you know, Pernod, one of the good things about the Union of Jamaican Alumni Associations, it used to be largely the, the, the secondary schools and the tertiary yes. institutions. Yes. Now it has mm -hmm. included the primary schools. Yes, but people, you know, but you people know. who have graduated from primary schools and um, are, are are devoted to the upliftment of those schools. This, the, the, listen, this the, this could make a huge difference in the quality of Jamaican education, you know, and in the workforce and in the the whole things that we were talking about with Ralston and Hyman. Indeed, it's Indeed. not a you silver know, bullet, I, but it's close no. to one. And you must also understand too is that. Can it, it, Come in here, Mrs. Little. The mission, the mission, the mission of UJA has always been about the primary schools and the basic schools, the support schools into the high schools. If you recall, yeah. UJA, under the leadership of Anton Tomlinson at yeah. the time, built a school there in Cousins Cove. Yes. You know, so we're not just on the scene now. We've been on the scene now over 30 years yeah. of consistency consistently um, contributing to the education fabric in this country. Gotcha. Mrs. Little, you were going right. to say... I mean, uh, let her go. Let me yeah, say, yes. I would like to say something. Go ahead. Sure, Mrs. Mrs. Gordon, afterwards. I, okay. I, I, I just wanted to um, to strengthen what Mr. Twaits um, just uh, mentioned regarding Yuja and um, the primary schools because I have been enjoying Beulah Primary and Infant School um, we have been enjoying some really, really fantastic um, partnership 
relationship, um, collaborative efforts coming out of our alumni association. Newly formed since 2019, we are a part of USA, obviously. Uh, and as a result of that, our alumni president, Mrs. Jennifer Morgan Petgrave, would have been working with uh, Miss Evelyn and others in USA to really help us. We have seen tremendous improvements, um, not just for this learning tablets that I'm here helping to promote as well. I'd love to have more learning tablets, and I know that we'll be getting more soon. But other infrastructural developments we have been benefiting from, and other programs we would have been benefiting from our alumni's involvement. And I take this opportunity to call on other schools, the leadership, the principals, just find that one alumni just one, a good mm. one, a great Get one, started. an awesome one. And then that one will tell one and tell one. <laughs> Next thing you know, you have an alumni association. You're a part of USA and you're a big beneficiary of many of the things that we Indeed. are now enjoying. And so I really support the work of the Alumni Association. Thank you for bringing the primary schools on board. And I invite more persons to give back to their primary schools. We have Let, let me also add. Uh, may I say oh, oh, hold on, hold on Miss Bowden. Hold on, Miss Bowden. Could you hold a minute? Good. Let's hold just on. take the break. We're coming right back to you both. Thanks for being with us on The Bridge 99. This is The Public Eye, Pernal Charles and myself in Kingston, Irwin Clare in New York. Talking with Evelyn Garden of Uja and Nadine Gay Little of the Beulah Ole School in Clarendon. We're talking about the learned tablets. We're anxious to find a way mm -hmm. in which we can transform primary education, which is underperforming indeed, in Jamaica. Indeed. Mrs. Garden, you were going to say. Yeah, I wanted to say when um, um, Claire mentioned about Anton starting primary school, one of the things under our then president Leslie and Samuel, we had about maybe six. We're up to 10 primary schools in, in Uja, and we're excited about that. And under her leadership, we have made many strides to get primary school to join the Union of Alumni Association, Uja. And so over the next couple of days, we will be in Jamaica launching the tablets to 14, to seven parishes, 14 schools across the island. And we, we are excited to be working with JTA to launch these tablets in these schools. We are excited to be in JA, working with our JTA partners and leading the charge to, again, improve literacy and numeracy across the board in all primary schools in the island. So we will be visiting uh, seven parishes, St. Thomas, Portland, Trelawney, St. James, Anova, and Westmoreland, to name a few. And they are excited, and we are just as excited to have other principal, as Miss Little share, shared, to be launching and talking about this tablet and what it does for our country and what it can do for us globally. An educated person is, as Yuja Loga goes, the educated are free. And so we are really excited to be arriving in Jamaica in the next couple of days, working with our primary school principals and sharing this great product with them. Well, we're, we're very glad to hear that and we welcome you. Um, and I hope that persons listening to the program will uh, access your website in order to be able to secure uh, these tablets and make make, mm -hmm. make gifts of them and yeah. schools can find their independent ways of affording many, many of them. I hope you, I'm glad to hear of the partnership with the Jamaica Teachers Association. In the recent times, they have seemed more interested in trade union matters than in educational upliftment. Uh, and therefore, they should their, their partnership in this is is exemplary. I'm wondering what the Ministry of Education themselves will do. Putting tablets, just tablets, Erwin, in the hands of children, um, has has not been a stellar success for a number of reasons. One, because they didn't have the pre-programmed lessons that this Learn It One seems to have, uh, by Mrs. Little's yes. report. And secondly, that uh, very often access has depended upon uh, availability of internet services, which, as you know, right. is spotty in the rural areas of Jamaica and expensive Correct. in all areas. Indeed, indeed. And, and, this, and this really resolves that. So again here, I, I think the message to, to Jamaica, and I have to un, an, un, understand in management in UGO, is about partnerships. And, and I'm quite certain that this is one opportunity that can bear significant fruit. The investment is, 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 is not as high as, as how we see many 
things are being spent here and it can go a far way in uplifting our students and our teachers. Well, I think that's Thank very you. important. Okay. Yes, Mrs. Gordon, okay. one more from you. Yes. Good. Sorry. Just would like to add that the UJA <clears throat> board, we have our new president, Donovan Wilson, and again with our then president, Leslie and Sam Wells, we are a team. We are actively working to get these tablets in Jamaica, and we're all on board, and that is our mission for the next couple of months, and as long as it takes to make sure we can read, increase numeracy and literacy across the board in Jamaica. Thank you. I'd like to ask Mrs. Gale a little before we, 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 we close. How do you manage with just a few tablets in your school? You mentioned that you concentrated the effort on those who those students who were weakest. Do they get to take home the tablets? Is uh, is there is are there, are there ways of of utilizing them to the full that you can share with us, Mrs. Little? I am holding one of the tablets. Um, I'm holding it up for you to see it. Yes, thank you. Forward. Good. And we've, we've been using it for four months. It's very durable, actually. Um, how do we manage? Um, we have had to devise um, creative means of using it um, throughout the school day. Um, we do not allow the children to take them home for safekeeping. It's only six, and we can't afford to lose any. Mm -hmm. So for that reason, we keep them here, we monitor them, and we work with the children here. One of the first things that we do is we have a morning program. So just before the startup of school at 8 o'clock, we would have asked the students to come in early, and the two teachers who primarily work with the students <clears throat> during that period, they would come in earlier than 8 o'clock, far earlier, and we try to spend about an hour um, at the most um, with the students working one-on-one. -on -one. Because the tablet is geared in such a way that it's really for individual use. But what we've had to do is to put two or three students together and they sit closely together and they view the screen, they're hearing. So each tablet comes with a hear earphone. Yes. So I, 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 we don't allow them to use the earphone. We allow the tablet to play um, aloud so they can all hear. Well, that's a, they observe is... us each other. They take. Sure. They take turns. Sure, this is and just what I wanted to hear. And they get to watch each other. Yes. Right, right. Yes. So we and have to turn our hand get... and make fashion. Yes, we have to get creative. We yes. have to. Yes. Well, it seems to me this is this is a way in which within our resources and within our time, we can make a real, really important intervention. Erwin Clare? Mm -hmm. Yes. A final thought, please. Well, you know, again, it goes back down to how we partner with agencies, down, whether it be the Chase Fund, whether it be the Ministry of Education, whether it be the, the NCB Foundation, all these entities, because I'm quite certain they, too, have an interest in the education of our children. And like I said, this is a, this is a small investment, but with significant rewards. And, and again, I just want to laud Yuja, um, 30, over 30 years in existence, one of the more prolific yes. organizations yes. in the diaspora. And, and, and for doing what they're doing, always thinking outside the box to ensure that our children are given the best opportunity. Mrs. Gay Little, you took over. Yes, sir. You took over Beulah from one of my best friends. Unfortunately, <laughs> she died. And uh, yes, I, I, yes. I, I just feel the fire of you. Isn't it nice? Yeah. Yes, yeah, that's what we mean. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I, I feel bigger proud, than the dollars. I feel yeah. proud to have fixed your road that you have a good road. To <laughs> Lord drive. of mercy. What are we going yeah, to God, do? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Lord of his we, mercy. We, yes, we, we, this, is, this is part of the course. <laughs> fully, as, as, as fully supportive Thank as you, as sir. Yeah, Thank God. you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for I this intend, interview. I intend to keep that the Beulah flag high. And uh -huh. to honor the memory also of our late um, past that, principal, that, Mrs. Santa Lisa. We're going to get to some more of those tablets. Very good. All right. There, there you go. go. There you go. There you go. Mrs. Thank you. All right. Thank Mrs. Gay Little, thank, thank you so much right. for joining us. All right. All that right. is Mrs. Thank you. My pleasure. Mrs. Good. Mrs. Evelyn Borden, who mm -hmm. is one of the board directors of UJA, and Mrs. Nadine Gay Little, principal of the Buna Ole School in Clarendon, well known now to yeah. the Honorable Colonel Charles MP Emeritus for the, yeah. er, for and, the and, area. And, and, and run it. Run it, run it, and I think he has. How much is your pledge? Put a number on it now. I don't want you to say some. What you talking about? Well, well quickly. I'm going to get in touch let me, with, let me with her. Something. Let me tell her something. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. I am ahead. prepared yes. to yes. make yes. contribution to education. It's going to make it work. Let me tell you, in case mm -hmm. you don't know, mm -hmm. if it were not for education, mm -hmm. 
I don't know where I would be if it right. were not for it, teachers. All of us. I all don't know us. where it would be. So those there two factors. Mm -hmm. Yes. Rani, Rani, you know that. You would have gone ahead. You think so? Um, <laughs> I wouldn't have, wouldn't have wanted to, but there we are. Such there you are, it. gentlemen. Urban Claire, thank you so much for your company all, today. All of it. Yes, sure, man. sure. And, and, and I, noticed, I noticed that as the politician is, he didn't tell me a number, but I'll catch him next week. <laughs> gentlemen, <laughs> until next week. Okay. All I, the best I, to you. I, I am going to talk to you off the on air. On the global connection. I see a big publication that you're involved in. Yeah. So I'm going to talk to you off the air. I don't want there to you talk to <laughs> Take care. All the best. All the the best. Global Connection, a part of the public eye on the Bridge 99 FM. And for us to thank all those who have made today's program possible. Look what we've done, Mr. Charles. We've opened the new year with some cogent and uh, an, an exacting analysis of the Jamaican economy with our friend yes, Ralston Hammond. And I, I really love that. We've got, yes. to, we've got to get Ralston. Again and, and this again. Time he's, he spoke to a level much lower than you well you know, to I, our level what a life <laughs> um, and then and then this very practical expedient yes, that, yes, that yes. the the, the alumni are doing yeah. so that's that's the kind of mix that we like that's the kind of mix that makes the public eye what it is and is resplendent resplendent of the of the bridge 99 fm thanks to all of our operators and producers who have made this possible join us next week wednesday for the public eye on the bridge 99 FM.